Hi all, I hope you're doing well. This lesson in the sketchbook is on value scale and shading a sphere. So we'll see what that means in a second. First, you'll get yourself a small round object, um, preferably white or a light color so that it shows shadow, light and shadow, because that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, so I'm using an egg. You can use a ping pong ball. You can use really any spherical object that you have that you can look at as a reference. So right now I'm doing a contour of the egg from my perspective. So I'm seeing it from the side. That's my cat. Um, so I'm seeing it from the side. He's going to get curious throughout this video. And um, so I'm drawing what I see from my side view. You're seeing the top of the egg in this video. Um, so this is about what I was looking at. So I'm just going to fix up my lines. And what we're going to be doing is transforming this circle on the page into a 3D looking object. So we're giving the illusion of 3D form and space. So we'll see what that means in just a second. What you should have is a pencil, by the way. Um, make sure that it's a pencil because we're going to be applying different pressure to make different values. So you'll see that here. So I'm making this little bar on the side. This will be a guide. This is a value scale we're making, similar to what we did with the paints for tempera. Um, when we did our paint demo, we did something similar to this. So right now, oh, that's when he messes up my line. <laughs> Um, so right now I'm making six little rectangles on this vertical bar. And here's where I encourage him to get off. Uh, so right now I'm making these six values that will inform how I shade this spherical object. So the top is going to be our lightest value. So value in art means the lights and darks. The lightest value in this will be white, and the darkest will be as close to black as we can get this graphite pencil to push on the paper. So this part's sped up. I'm pushing very hard on the pencil to get this very dark line. The harder you push a graphite pencil into the paper, the darker the color will be. So I'm filling this in. And this will be this will be my guide for the darkest values on my sphere. So now for the next one, I want it to be pretty dark, but I don't want it to be as dark as the first one. I want there to be a noticeable change. So I'm putting a little bit less pressure with my pencil. And I'm filling it in. I'm trying to go um, fairly even with the application and color. You can always go back and fix. You'll see me doing that throughout because I want the increments or levels of change between each uh, value section to be about the same. So the difference between 1 and 2 should be about the same difference as 3 and 4, 5 and 6, etc. So here I'm getting about to my halfway point, which means I'm going to start getting significantly lighter after this. And then my top one I'm actually going to leave blank. So this one is going to be very light. I'm just grazing the paper with my pencil. Here I put a little bit more pressure, kind of even it out, a little bit more over here, a little bit more over here. So that's my value scale. And now what I'm doing is I'm noticing where the light source is. So the light source is where the light is coming from in relation to our object. So we'll notice the light source that I have is coming kind of from the upper right. So this is where we are going to have light coming from. So the light part will be in the upper right and the lower left will have all of our dark values farthest from the light source. So you'll notice a shadow is always in the opposite direction of the light source. If you stand outside during sunset, if the sun's behind you, your shadow will be in front of you. If the sun's in front of you, your shadow will be behind. 
So we are noticing that the darkest value, which is the drop shadow, so the drop shadow is the shadow that's not on the object, it's cast by the object. So shadows can happen on an object, and they can happen around an object as a cast shadow. Now I'm taking my darker values and I'm going in and shading with my pencil, varying my pressure as I get closer to the light source. So the light source will be where the lightest values are hitting my round object. So you'll start to see this circle transform into what looks like a sphere because I'm adding value changes that are subtle enough. So I'm using my guide on the side to help inform, okay, about halfway up my sphere, as I look at the object, it's gonna be about that value in the middle. So while drawing, you should be looking at your object, because that's your reference, that's what you're looking at, and you're doing observational drawing. So you're looking at your reference, but you're also looking at your value scale to see how much pressure should I apply to my pencil and how dark should my color be for this part of the spherical object, be it an egg, ping pong ball, whatever it is. So this will slowly start to get rounder looking and I'll go back and kind of reassess where my shadows and light values fall based on what I see. So observational drawing is all about what you see and how you can convey what you see to your overall drawing. So now I'm gonna go back and just double check where my values are hitting and see kind of how this looks. So thank you and I hope you all stay safe. Have a good day.